Hello and welcome to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Monday, February 12th, 2024. That means it's the 43rd day of ranking my favorite video games through each day of the year. Coming in at number 324 is The Legend of Korra. Unlike most licensed games, The Legend of Korra doesn't have you playing through a rehashing of the events of the show. Rather, it bridges a small time gap between the end of the second season and the start of the third. For those unfamiliar with Korra or any of the Avatar franchise, here's some important things to know about the world. Many people are born with latent abilities to manipulate the four elements of water, earth, fire, and air. People with these abilities are called benders, and they can only manipulate one of the four. There is one exception, however, in the form of an ever-incarnating person who is referred to as the Avatar. Throughout the second season of Korra, she uses her Avatar abilities to open portals to the spirit world, allowing others to pass through in either direction. This causes a lot of problems, but at the end of the season, she decides to leave them open, feeling the good it brings the world outweighs the risk it presents. Most of the third season revolves around the political turmoil and fallout of this decision, including a terrorist anarchy cell going around murking world leaders. The events of this game set up some background information for this terrorist cell and their origin beyond even what's explained in the show. I wouldn't call this required play for anyone who likes the shows, but it does help explain the world a little bit in some interesting ways. Now on to the game. As you've probably been able to see, The Legend of Korra is a spectacle fighter where you control the four elements as Avatar Korra, each with wildly different fighting styles that lend themselves well to different situations and types of enemies. Most of the combat is trying to chain together various combos in order to get big, crazy bending attacks. When faced with several enemies, the best way to fight them is to time counterattacks by hitting the guard button just before being hit by an attack and dodge rolling to not stand in stuff that hurts you. If you want the combat without the story or running around, there's a mode for that. In the time frame that Korra takes place, there's a combat sport called Pro Bending. I won't go over all the rules here, but what you need to know is that you basically do the combat of the game with toned down attacks and more focus on counter timing in order to push the other team off the platform into the water below. Despite being a spectacle fighter, this game isn't actually all combat. Sometimes you need to pick your battles and get out of dodge, which is where Naga, Korra's pet polar bear dog, yes that's a thing in this universe, comes in. Now it's a running game. Dodge, jump over, or slide under various obstacles as you work your way through the winding streets of Republic City. You can use Korra's bending to get additional bonuses as well, such as a shield or shoot fireballs to destroy obstacles. As you're running, you can collect different resources you'll use to buy items from Iroh's tea shop, allowing you the ability to equip and customize Korra. All in all, the game doesn't offer a lot of depth, with simple combat that for the vast majority of the game is just kinda too easy, and shoehorned variety to stages like the Naga running sections. Enemy variety is pretty lacking, but it's at least consistent with the world it's in. Thankfully, despite or perhaps even because of the simplicity of combat, the animations and views are definitely enjoyable to look at, and as a big fan of the Avatar franchise, it feels great to play as Korra and kick a bunch of ass. If for nothing else, that puts it on my rankings. Join me tomorrow as I talk about the 323rd game on my list.